Pero uh, ayun Very good Different place, different approach Siguro <laughs> Para may hugot eh <laughs> Alright, welcome back boys and girls It's another episode of Baet Experience So, of course, uh, bago ang lahat, we would like to thank our friends and sponsors, Pommy with A, the legendary DIY mixes. The 350 ml is now available. Check out their uh, page for prices and promos. So, the new drink, the Gin Bramble, is that the drink that you're drinking right now? Zell, so that must be really oh, no. good. I have to try that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and of course, Manila Wings to go, our friends from Manila Wings, good food in your neighborhood. Chicken Wings is back, and this time it's for delivery. Available in original Manila Wings flavor, honey garlic, silly wings, soy ginger. Available for half kilo and one kilo. Only for 500 pesos, I think. So that's a good deal right there. And you, you'll have a great experience cooking the wings. And Man, I'm getting hungry about that. So, uh, and of course, Happy Plants Manila, MNL. For all the plati- plantitos and plantitas out there, order some greens in your space now from Happy Plants with their wide range of indoor and outdoor plants. By the way, use the Baet Experience code upon ordering to avail their special promo. So there's a surprise waiting for you when you use that code through that Facebook ordering form, I think. So yeah, uh, search Happy Plants Manila. And of course, Leia Pure, our official skin pro- skincare provider. I just applied it, by the way. I feel soft right now <laughs> for the Baet Boys. So check out leiapure.com for more details. And you can order there online, by the way, and have it delivered right there to your door. All right, uh, before all that, uh, our title today is Namaste. Namaste at home. So steady health, fitness, and passion. So we're going to be talking about fitness uh, and a lot of about health and, of course, nutrition. So we have a guest today. Uh, she's an expat from India. She, she lives here in the Philippines for uh, 10 years now, uh, so it's been a decade. As an IT professional, so she must really... She must be really busy, and uh, she accommodated us, uh, our guesting today. She's a parent of a beautiful two-year-old daughter and a Bodycon representative for Gold's Gym BGC. Wow. Mm-hmm. Man, she's a health, fitness, nutrition, name it all, <laughs> enthusiast, and an IT professional in one body. Our guest, Toshi Mago. Good evening. <laughs> good evening. Good evening, Toshi. Thank you. Thank you, guys. I'm really um, amazed by what a fantastic Thanks, thanks for inviting me. Thank you. Thank All right, you. we're pumped. Yeah, we're very, we're very excited to discuss a lot of stuff right now. Uh, maybe we can start with uh, a little bit of history. We want to ask how's your journey coming to the Philippines? I mean, you got expatriated uh, to PH. How do you, how did you begin? Yeah. How was your journey? Can you tell us more about that? Yes. Yeah, so- So it's really interesting because I actually migrated to Philippines 10 years ago and I got married uh, recently when we had this plan of moving to this country. So at the start, uh, we were really nervous because it was a new place. We were not aware of the people and the culture. So we started with a lot of, we were really nervous about it. But once we landed here and saw the people and the culture, it was very warm and the journey was very smooth. So And we like the people, how, uh, how they are, they're so warm. So it was, for us, it was like a home away from home. So that actually made our journey and stay over here comfortable. And that's what also was one of the major factors that actually kept us going for 10 long years. And we decided to stay here for good. So that, that's how our journey came. And uh, we didn't know what we are stepping into, but once we stepped there, When we started, it was really wonderful. So, yeah, right, that that's sounds good. So how do you find it? How do you find staying here in the Philippines? So do you know any Tagalog words already? Uh, or do you speak survival? So <laughs> okay, there you go. <laughs> do you know the meaning of bayet already? Yeah, can't be, can't be. So yeah, it's, it's really nice. <laughs> yes. And um, yeah, so... I will say that, you know, the one thing that I will say uh, that once you move to any country, the one thing in the survival is the language. Though Filipinos have their own language, but here people are so well versed in English. So that really made that experience uh, very smooth and very, uh, the transition was very smooth for us. So that I will say. And as we all know that the Filipino, uh, you know, the, the 
the culture and how they they welcome the people from our other country and the culture that is that really is really wonderful so that way i will say it was really nice and once we came here we can see that there is so much familiarity from our own culture like in our culture also we are very foody outgoing and you know mm-hmm. very uh, welcoming mm-hmm. people so as what we saw in turkey we never thought that we are away from so they really welcome us i have lot of good philippines yeah so it is that's how it started and we actually thought of staying here for good yeah wow wow Oh, you mentioned I mean. the people and the culture, right? But what, what, why the Philippines? I mean, I, I guess you talked about that, right? Before, before even flying to Manila or the Philippines, I, there's a lot of countries in the world. So why Manila? Yes. So we actually got an opportunity from our uh, uh, company to migrate here. So when we actually got this, uh, especially my husband actually got the opportunity to the Philippines uh, from his company. because at that time when we came to work they home especially for the medical business and all so that's how we got this opportunity and uh, we decided to come yeah yeah so earlier earlier was, that's a good uh, that's a good basically work related yeah mm-hmm. yeah that's that's a good that's a good way to decide and to stay here in the philippines welcome uh, it's been a decade now so thank you yeah If you can yeah. consider yourself uh you know a local now <laughs> <laughs> a local in BGC <laughs> yeah. 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 because, uh, because the, the city so, has evolved a lot right mm-hmm. so you were talking about being a foodie earlier so which one is uh which food is your favorite which food i like you mean which cuisine yeah i mean filipino yeah. cuisine yeah Okay, so see, when we you know, actually migrated here, we were vegetarian. So at first, it was a little tough for us because it's so tough. Oh yeah. Vegetarian food, but uh, yeah, so that was one of the issue. And when came here, uh, even we used to order vegetarian food. They used to give us chicken. So that was uh, that is another story. But uh, I think three, four down the line, uh, we I will say three, four years back. and my husband both started eating chicken so that way i i tried some of the filipino food i love the chicken adobo though i know it is made in pork but i don't eat pork or beef so i tried in chicken really uh, nice yeah and uh, what else i also tried uh, tinola soup i i love mm. it it's so oh yeah warm and it's so so i love it so yeah so all of the food and what there is also one more Eggplant dish that I tried. I'm forgetting eggplant and egg. What is called? Torta. 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 Torta talong. Yes, torta. It's yeah. it's actually an omelet, right? Like a yeah. eggplant omelet. Yeah. Yeah, I like yeah. that too. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So yeah, it's so a couple of food here. We we try it. It's really nice. So yeah. Yeah, that, that must be really exciting. I mean. Being a foodie, so okay, let's talk talk about being a foodie. And you mentioned to us uh, that you're comp- competing to this body con for a gold stream BGC. So yeah. how do you manage that? I mean, being a fo- foodie, or maybe we can start on why did you enter into fitness? Being a foodie, that must be really challenging, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> it is, but the, actually, it goes hand in hand. First of all, we have a misconception that being a You cannot be fitness. You cannot be into fitness. It's not like that because even if you are into fitness and you're working out, food plays a major role. So it you don't have to deprive yourself of good food, but of course you need to know what you're eating so that it cannot, it should not be hampering your goal. So I will say that being a foodie, yeah, sometimes it becomes a little challenging to stay on track because you have to. Uh, because you know sometimes you have to use your patience and all, but uh, it it's just one of the factor I will say. But it, it's not the deciding factor that you know you cannot be. So yes, uh, but as I mentioned, yeah, sometimes it's challenging. But if you are disciplined and focus on the goal, it doesn't matter. So I still eat the whole food and enjoy everything, and still try to stay on track. 
so yeah so uh-huh. that's how the yeah so body conscious happened because i started my fitness journey um it actually happened after delivering my baby so at that time oh. i started the transformation yeah okay so, so, so is that mm-hmm. what triggered you to start uh no. after having a baby or no no it's not so i will say i have always been an active person before the mm. baby i was when i was always in yoga you were doing such sport mm. or saying that this is normal or biking so i am all over the place i just love being active running <laughs> biking saying that anything you can ask me or i i feel love it but when i enter my 30s i had a lot of hormonal issues because that's what you know most of the start mm. to say that that Uh, at start to uh, pace at that time your hormones are changing mm-hmm. you start to gain weight there are little things you are working then you have to manage time you have to take care of the family so all of these actually started and i started to gain weight and at the same time i also had this cavity so that really mm-hmm. uh, depressed me a lot and i really gained a lot you no know, without having a clue that why and i think that oh i'm so active i go to gym and still i'm gaining weight it was really tough phase for me but then at the, that time after means having all these things i got pregnant after a lot of complications and after delivering the baby one day i i, I look at myself and said no this is not what i want because it's not about only about the effort. my energy was low i was so under confident because this was not the short term thing i was facing it even before the baby it was not that i i delivered the baby and that's why i wanted to put so i realized that it was even happening to me before delivering the child so i really wanted then i thought that okay what i like i like to be being active so i start i thought okay let me i have to take back the control of my life and then i started this and this time i started with the knowledge of nutrition because before i was just doing i was young at that time and i was just going on and on and there was no guidance from me so this time i started with a proper nutrition guidance and that's how this fitness journey started and slowly and steadily i started to transform means the goal you never reach a goal it's always like when you reach this you have another goal in the fitness but that's how i started and and my transformation started from here and then body con just happened eventually it was nothing mm. that i planned so i already started the journey i, I used to work out in the gold gym uh bgc over here so they had this contest and my husband was very keen to take part in it mm. and i just went with him to support to cheer him up but uh, i ended up participating so i just walked the ramp and just like you know, selected the company oh nice that's a good that's a good uh... so that's how bgc happened body con happened yeah yeah that's a good that's a good that's story great. for that and and with that um <clears throat> yeah you you mentioned that your husband is also into fitness as well um how's the life as a fit parent fit wife and a fit mom how's that how's that going for you yeah i will say any woman like i just busy if you have a kid and you have a daughter at home because my baby is 3 years old cuz me they like they don't get to the five minutes of either so it's <laughs> not about this being a fit mom or or a working mom i would say it's for any women or any parents or any even for a woman or a father or a mother it's really a tough job because it's full time one but yes being a working mom and also into fitness sometimes it's very challenging it's really draining so i take it day by day i don't put pressure on myself that i have to if i'm not feeling good i just don't work out on i prioritize my work on those things so that's how i keep going and another thing is discipline and consistency it's because we often say we talk about motivation what is going on but not the over it if you're not consistent and not disciplined you would not be able to reach your goal so these things actually help both me and my husband both of us to keep going and keep working towards our goal Wow, that's that's strong. I mean, I love that yeah. statement uh, with the root word consistency. Uh, some people tend to think that yeah. they work out tonight, they'll get results tomorrow, mm-hmm. and they they won't work out because they didn't see any result after. So I think that's 
listeners, by the way. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> very, very important. <laughs> yeah, that's very important. Consistency. Just keep doing whatever you're doing right now, and don't expect instant results. Okay, yeah. uh, coming from a wife, a mom, and a uh, basically a, a fit mom. <laughs> Yeah, so so can you tell us about your uh, routine? Uh, exactly. Uh, on, a, on a daily basis, like uh, maybe let's start with a pre-quarantine routine because it must be really different. Uh, of course, you you must be going to the gym every single day, or I don't know how your routine is. And how is it currently, like with the home workouts happening? Yeah. yeah. Uh, so it's it was a 360 change when the quarantine happened. Before quarantine, I used to work in the gym at least four to five days, depending on what my schedule is. And I'm also a yoga practitioner. Sometimes I if I do it three times a week. Yoga is really my passion. I really love it. So I make sure that I practice as well because yoga is all about discipline and consistency. Right? So I make it three days. But me and my husband both have worked in different. Shift night shift. He used to work night shift for the time we have been married, and I always worked the night shift. So for us, getting time was very tough because only see each other on weekends. But the interesting thing is, when we started this journey, this actually became a bonding session for us mm-hmm. because we uh-huh. never used to see each other on weekdays. But because of this thing, because we, we were so motivated and we wanted to. Sorry for using the word motivated. I will again say that because I don't. Think <laughs> we we were so much into it. We're so passionate about this. Yeah, we're so passionate about this. That so we decided that we will work out together. So this gave us some time to spend together during uh, uh, weekdays. So what I used to do, my office was just there. So during my lunch break, I used to work out, and he used to wake up during uh, by twelve o'clock or one o'clock. And then we used to work out together, or sometimes in the morning if we have day off. So that was supposed to be our bonding time, or you can say the date time. And we, so that I would say this was the routine. And then like because we used to work different shifts, so if I am in office, so he used to take care of the baby, and once I go back, so it was my routine also to take care of the baby. So evening time, that's how we. Me, I used to get some time with my baby and just walk. So in this way, I was also getting cardio. So this was the pre-quarantine, I will say. Mm-hmm. So our mm-hmm. bonding time, the family time, we spend in our bond. But post-quarantine, of course, it was a 360 degree change, and we were just supposed to be at home. It was really tough. But as I mentioned, consistency and discipline. So that mm-hmm. really helped me because first. If you're consistent and if you have to do this, you will find the way to. Do it. So I I didn't have any gym equipment at home. I started with just home workout, body weights, mm-hmm. or using some uh-huh. like rice sack or water bottle yeah. bottles as a way. So that I should not be hungry. So that's how I started. Few days we were really low. So as I mentioned that, that I always believe in don't. Plan too much. If I'm not feeling, I did not work out. But slowly and then slowly and steadily, a lot of online classes started to come. So there are many online yoga teachers, especially my teachers mm-hmm. who I used to practice with. They started giving online classes. That's great. Classes. So that actually helped because then I started to plan my day. So in the morning I practice yoga. Then my baby wakes up. I take care of the baby. Then cook. Me and husband, my husband, clean the house, and then. In the evening, we can work out together. So what I started to do is, I used to take my or I include her also. She's two and a half, so she do whatever she uh, she does whatever she does. So I it became our family bonding time. So that's why I will say uh-huh. consistency. And if you really want to do it, you will find the time. Some days I will not say that it is. Some days it's tough. So just take it by the time, take it by the time, and just keep going. That's the key that's goal. Uh-huh. Again, consistency. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm. Yeah. I'm just curious. I mean, we're talking about consistency, motivation, and discipline. But when you join a competition, would that change yeah. your routine or regimen? Oh. I'm just curious because obviously I I know people yes. who, you know, yes, they're yes. they're all jacked up, you know, they're just <laughs> working out. But then when they when they oh. join competitions, they're like you know training for several hours day and night. 
not eating or you know the diet is <laughs> yes, really different. Yes, yes, yeah? I was uh, definitely. <laughs> oh, definitely because I joined it just for fun, no, without knowing that what is inside it. I just thought that it is just for it is it's just for okay. normal people like who are not into professional bodybuilding and all, but. I just joined it for fun, and we thought he told us that we are the only couple in the competition, and I was very happy because I'm gonna get some time with my husband because we can work out together. But when I saw the other participants, and I was like, "Oh my God, they are already <laughs> in so much shape!" And so, but then they like, it's not about you know, because we had the orientation, and we all were talking. It was a huge fit family. We were so supportive of each other, and then I realized. It's not about how, I mean, how. Of course, you have to put in the effort, but you have to enjoy the journey. It should not make you sad, or it should not make you depressed. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, you did not hit that goal. Because if you are sad, that can also help and hamper your progress in the fitness. That's what I learned. So I started to enjoy the process. Of course, I started to tweak some of the diets too, because then, because it was a three-month journey, so we put some targets into it. But we mm-hmm. did not go into the fat diet, of course, because it's not only about the months that you can do low carb or like no carb or any other yeah. fat diet. Because it's about your life. You can't give three months and think that entire life is okay because it will have consequences. So we started tracking and maintaining our diet very intelligently so that our body is not getting impacted, and of course, working on our workout. Or if I was working two days, I started to increase it slowly uh, by five uh, uh, days or like four days, four to five days, and just work out a little bit more. So that's how it it uh, I actually started to uh, make our plan for the body part. But yeah, yeah, that was sound really. You know, that's that that needs a lot of discipline uh, because for me, for me, we go to the gym. I think me, Carlo, and Deal, but we haven't really gone into that kind of competition, uh, trying to really train for that body to basically. But I think uh, what I like what you just said is to enjoy the journey, exactly, and yeah. not just aim for the big prize. Of course, you want to aim for the big prize, like always aim for that. But enjoy yeah. it while you can, because uh, you know as much as possible. You don't want to get frustrated and you know you'll get depressed and uh, true, you know you get out of track and you don't train anymore because sometimes it can get into our heads, right? So mm-hmm. I, th- I think I really like what you just said there. Just enjoy the journey, enjoy the competition. And it seems like all, all even other contestants are very friendly in Quadicon, right? Uh, yes. And they're very helpful to each other. Yes, so. they're really... Yeah, they're really helpful. They, they you know, we always used to have have, uh, even in the quarantine, because the uh, competition got cancelled, it was supposed to be on 24th March, but we went into lockdown on the 18th of March. So the competition got cancelled, but we still connect virtually to discuss what we are doing, and like we make fun also that because you know because of the mm-hmm. quarantine and all, um, everyone put before quarantine, everyone put so much effort because you know mm-hmm. tracking your diet is. Oh, everyone yeah. was in just superb shape everyone was so dry and looking so fab but once the <laughs> lockdown announced I remember all of us went and we ordered cake and everyone ate cake and we really <laughs> made fun of it <laughs> because yeah of course uh, we were sad that you know the competition was gone yeah. but the bright side was that we were there to help each other not everyone was on the same it really helped me especially because they we check on each other how everyone is doing, and if someone is not following the rules, it's always to be okay what we're doing. There is there is nothing to be good because it's a long term goal. It's not a short term. So oh yeah, I love that. Yeah, which le- which leads me to this discussion. So we had this kind of uh, small segment every we do every time we have an episode. So since you mentioned fat diets earlier, I really want to talk about that. Uh, so we have this segment, we call it Baet Busters. It's kind of, it's kind of like the myth busters and uh, we, we basically bust uh, a lot of myths or uh, you know, common fallacies that goes out in the internet or somewhere else. And we want you to bust it or at least prove it 
uh, if it's uh, correct. Maybe Jail, you can start on that one. <laughs> yeah. So you mentioned about uh, all those uh, fad diets as something that um, is is is, uh, is going to be uh, very very um, tough to think about. So is it true that they work all those keto diets, all those plant based diets, Italian? Uh, Lulitic, Atkins, South Beach, etc. It will what work. What do you think about those? Because... It can work. It can work. It's not like that it will not work. But depends on your goal. Because keto yeah. diet, Atkins diet, or any diet. Because as I mentioned, fitness is a lifestyle change. If you think that you can be on keto throughout your life, you go ahead and do it. And if you think that you cannot be on keto throughout your diet, once you put in carbs in your diet, Everything that you have lost, you will come. Things will come back. So we, that's why we have to be very wise when we any diet. It's not. A, and I always keep saying that that this is not a short term goal. It's a long term goal. So we have to be very careful what kind of fitness change we are, what kind of fitness diet we have. So it works for people, but it it, it everything will come back if you. Just go back on your normal diet. Choose your diet that is very wise. So yeah, but I'll give you one more thing that I I have done it, and why I'm saying this is from my experience. I have done everything, and I know that this thing comes back. <laughs> I did one time a GM diet. That is the biggest fad diet in the market. Oh yeah, Because I heard about that too. Seven days, <laughs> there is no chance if you are not going to pass. Yes, wow. I have done that. Trust me, it is it is definitely. Yeah. It is crazy. I I saw I saw the recipe so, of the food and yeah, it's it's a total fat diet. I think uh, I I even tried the first day of it. I can't take it. Uh, uh, it's basically it's called GM diet yeah. because of the General Motors. Uh, you know, back in the days, all the all the sales uh, person yeah. were like uh, they're trying to be fit, and they kind of released this uh, fat diet for them to lose weight fast. As yes, they yes. can, uh, but yes. that's crazy. And uh, I think what you just said earlier is uh, a really great uh, statement to bust this fat diet thing. Uh, it's about the way of eating, not yeah. just in the span of time that you eat. Whatever you lose during the time of your diet, correct me if I'm wrong, right? Whatever you lose that uh, yeah. during the time of that, you can gain if you go back into your, you know. Whatever diet that you have you know, before doing that fat diet. So, can you tell us more about how you how you maintain your figure right now with without those fat diets? Yeah. Can you tell us quickly on that on how you track basically. And there is one more thing that I would like to. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. There is one more thing that I would like to add here is how to judge how to you know come to a conclusion that this diet is fat or it's just gonna. Work for me or not? First of all, any diet that claims that in a week or sorry, in a two weeks you lose five, uh, lose five to ten kg, we need to understand one thing: you cannot lose five to ten kg of fat in a week or two weeks. It is just water <laughs> weight, and water weight is just hard to burn. How I wish. It's nothing. Yeah. It's nothing. It's not gonna work. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So you would not be able to, you know, uh, burn fat in one week. It's a long process. Depending on the person's history, genetic and nutrition and workout history, so it's a long process. It, it it's not gonna go in one. Mm -hmm. That sounds great. So maybe I can, I'll go next on the and next item. Also I think that the fat, fat burners. Oh, yeah, I was about to ask that. I was about to ask that. I was about you're to ask him. that. So yeah, you just read my mind. Yes. Uh, <laughs> yes, that about that supplements. Sense. About supplements. There are a lot of common misconceptions about. Uh, 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 supplements. So maybe we could start with the fat burners. There are expensive ones that says that you can burn fat in the week's time or yeah. in day's time. So can you tell us more about that? See, I will say that you know the I have done, I have taken, it and I know it doesn't work, and it is just a big hole in your pocket. Don't spend <laughs> on that. This is just the marketing gimmick, I will say. As I mentioned, yeah, and as I mentioned that, it is just you know anything that claims that you will burn it, nothing comes easy in this life. I always believe in that. Nothing. There is no free lunches. You have to sweat it out to get to get it done. 
so same thing is for the fitness you really have to work it to achieve your goal if these things if a pill can help you then everyone in the world will be like a pill you know in our glass figure or in a big muscular mm-hmm. body it is not going to happen like that so it's a big big myth it doesn't help at all and it's a marketing thing so i will say to stay away from this especially the fat burners yeah mm-hmm. how about the whey protein and you know some some protein yeah, shakes that they've been selling right now yeah the protein shake is just to so that you can complete your food macros of protein that is why people take protein shake sometimes i have heard the women or the girls say oh you take protein shake you will become muscular like mm-hmm. it's not like that you won't become muscular like <laughs> so if yeah so you can take protein shake if given the fact that it is coming from a good brand and it is it doesn't have anything you know um any other product or something that is and so you just read the product uh, the ingredient of it and the brand that you are buying and you are good to go but you can only take protein shake if you are not completing your protein intake of a day from your natural like before i used to take protein shake but now i don't because i complete my protein intake so there is no harm in taking protein shake but if you can complete it by taking protein from your natural food like from meat or from pulses or anything then why to spend money on those and you can easily survive without protein shake and that is not any steroid or anything it's still natural so it's so okay. yeah i love what you just said right there girls you won't be masculine if you drink any protein shake <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We don't believe what, uh, what, what whoever is saying that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and just to follow up on what Iman just said, and I hope my wife is also watching this, and I hope she listens to this. Women <laughs> lifting weights would become muscular like men. Is that even true? It's not true. It's the biggest myth because, first of all, when men become muscular like that. is because of the hormones they have the testosterone mm-hmm. hormones that really help in gain that kind of muscle and build muscle that so for us it is reversed the more we lift weight the more stronger and more leaner we start to get so what will happen is like for me what happened i did not when i started this journey i did not lost too much of weight that is also one of the things that people are after lose weight to lose weight it is just one of the of you being fit but it what what happen is if you lift weight your fat is converted into muscle and that converting fat into muscle requires more energy so that's how you start to become more lean and for women as i mentioned we don't have that hormone we will not be we will not start looking muscular like men it's not possible for us so i will say just go and lift weight it really makes you strength stronger look beautiful and you know gives you good look So just go and more or less it gives you more energy to do your daily chores. So it's really good. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I think that answers it. Uh, to Carlos' wife. Yeah, your wife's okay. <laughs> yeah, your wife's okay. I hope you're watching. I hope you listen. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds great. I think that that's all what we have right now. Uh, maybe we can move on to challenges. Thank you, thank uh, I really you love. to hear how you oh by the way thank you thank you for answering those so people all those myths uh so she just busted everything out of it <laughs> so th- please don't believe whatever's up on the internet or whatever cheese miss that you hear in any of your gyms <laughs> yeah so yeah uh, uh we want to discuss about uh some challenges that you had in this uh fitness journey that you're having so Of course, you mentioned earlier that the time management, you had this uh, night shift and uh, the, the husband is uh, having a different shift. And so how do you handle that one? I mean, how do you, how do you guys, did you like approach your husband into, let's do this our bonding thing or something like that? Because a lot of couples must be listening and they must be having trouble of finding a bonding time with their, you know, significant one. Uh, so how, how would you recommend doing the time management with the partner like that time management i will say yeah it's really a big i will say yeah, it's a challenge but then as i mentioned like if you want to do something you have to plan your day and 
you have to prioritize that what you want or you have to see that uh, right now what 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 is calling for you and just i just prioritize my work so bonding i will say see there is something means it's about passion on what you want like for uh, me and my husband working out or uh, being fit was the passion that we shared and that's health bonding so it goes for every other couple that whatever whatever you guys are passionate about work on that either it is fitness some hobby or like being eating together or cooking together cleaning whatever so you can define your bonding time as per your passion for me it was with my husband to work out together because we are very different person and this was one thing that we were really uh, passionate about it so that really helps me and I, yeah but some days i will not, i will be lying if i say that it doesn't overwhelm me sometimes it is really tiring <laughs> you have to take care of the baby you have to work out before i used to feel guilty that oh i did not work out today oh my day is not good but then i learned one thing over the period of time you have to live in the moment if you don't feel like working out or if you don't feel like you know just anything in any household work just let it go the this is the art that actually keeps you happy so you have to learn to let go of things don't hold on to things too much because that will yeah. stay in the present wow that's some strong words uh it's <laughs> <That's> nice <laughs> learn girls learn to let go <laughs> exactly exactly yeah. you know yeah i, 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 I think so uh, yeah yeah i think you're right there i mean uh i totally agree people tend to be too hard on themselves mm-hmm. uh on something that they you know they don't feel like doing and sometimes they actually even us even us I mean, us ourselves like if we miss a workout or trying to you know you're not working out you should be doing this yeah. doing that and you know you're kind of pressuring yourself <laughs> into it uh, yep agree yeah i think i like that what you just said man. sorry carlo you were saying earlier no, i now. was i was i was just surprised that you said that because you know guys don't don't bash me for saying this but i saw a, a documentary <laughs> recently by zac efron uh-huh. so you know zac efron right <laughs> so He was talking about that, you know. He, you know, he's all he's fit, right? He's always yeah, you know, yeah. All that, but he's been sad for the last ten years because he was pushing himself and all of that. And then he took his, his he did his documentary, traveled the world, tried different food, and he mentioned that this is like the first time that he's been happy because he gave in. He wasn't really thinking about looking good. But he well he was looking he, he's already <laughs> he looks good so yeah <laughs> but he's, he's he's been sad actually, for the last ten years everyone yeah that yeah. actually that's what I'm saying it happens in everyone even with me though I just started this but I as I mentioned I am a little consistent I am a little bit disciplined person that way so as I mentioned whenever I never used to work out I used to feel guilty but then I realized this process or anything that you do in your life it should give you joy or it should give you happiness. If you're not happy, it is not worth the process. Similarly, you should enjoy the journey. The moment you start and start to enjoy the journey, everything will start, you know, falling in place. Just enjoy and don't, you know, forget about the result. It will happen eventually. Yeah. Mm-hmm. By the way, Iman, if you're gonna watch a documentary, carbs is a secret to long life. That's <laughs> a secret that I learned from that series, literally it's, it's, in Italy. <laughs> <laughs> just, just just to give a uh, uh, context on what Carlo was saying. Uh I'm very known as a guy who's always on the low carb diet. Yeah. And I yeah. I'm kind of doing uh uh a five day low carb kind of days and on the weekends I eat whatever uh whatever carbs that I can take. <laughs> But of course I I'm still tracking whatever. Which leads me to this question actually. Uh I think this should be very challenging. I think we yeah. all here have experienced this, uh, even on training days, and on, uh, you know, we are all foodies, by the way. Like, uh, we love food. Name it, we will be love it. <laughs> so, being a foodie yet maintaining gains, we call it gains. So, some people say uh, building abs is in the kitchen, and building other muscles is in the gym. So, how do you keep maintaining that? Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's really true because before I used to think, oh, you do hundred crunches, you will have abs. It doesn't. Yeah. <laughs> so 
it, it doesn't work like of course the food is the key we really have to do but one thing i will say is you know maintaining the six pack app throughout the year is impossible until unless you are not getting paid for it or like so you i will say until unless you are not getting paid for it or you are a, you are a model <laughs> yeah 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 so make it in the six pack app it's you can do it anyone can actually say and anyone can actually have that that's not something it's about the food only. but you cannot have it in diet year because you will go out and eat you will yeah. you cannot be on diet throughout your life so being a foodie of course it sometimes is tough but that's why i mentioned you have to choose a diet that fits your lifestyle you can be on the months four months or six months of transformation journey where you are watching everything you eat because you want to look certain way or you want to lose some weight or you want to gain muscle or anything so that way on those journey you can be little fit but other than that you are fit it's okay but having a six pack ad and working on that throughout the year it it is a long journey mm-hmm. and for me i will say it's tough so i have realized that you cannot have six packs ad throughout the year <laughs> and just have it for like <laughs> depends on the goal Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I just so, decided so, just to eat. I'll just eat. <laughs> so, 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 so to our girlfriends and wives, uh, it's a long time. It's a long term journey. Okay. So just please wait yeah. <laughs> until you yeah, can. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or 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 just accept us for who we are. <laughs> exactly. If exactly. you're happy. Don't expect us wow. tomorrow. If you're happy, <laughs> if it brings you joy. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Again, it depends on your goal, as close to imagine. But, but I'll just highlight one thing. It's really tough because when you are on a journey, like when you were on bodycon journey, it was three or four months uh, course. Means, and we were on strict diet because uh, you just have to walk the stage and everything. It's really tough when you are out with friends, and I think only one will understand. And being mm. from my culture, food is like. You know, We are happy. We are sad. There is this occasion, that occasion. We eat a lot, and people get offended if you say no to the food. And I get it. Yeah. If I am at their place, I will also feel sad because I have cooked food. But then slowly and steadily, people, especially our friends, they understood that why we are saying no. But as I mentioned, it is just for short term. You cannot say you cannot be on diet throughout the year. Throughout the year. So yeah. So it is also tough and challenging because. Can't say no to people all the time. That is why you have few months for your transformation and life by so that you achieve your goal and then you see from there and can just keep working out, keep watch on your food here and there, and you are good to go. Yeah, I, I think we should call that happy diet. What you just said. What you, what you just said. <laughs> yeah, you, can, you should. You should write a cookbook. About that, <laughs> no, no, knowing Filipinos, it's very difficult for us to say no. Actually. Exactly. Oh yeah, they say yes. What's the difference? There's always yeah. that uh, what we call jahe piece <laughs> every time we eat. Especially uh, when your friend yeah. says it's my treat. <laughs> <laughs> true, that's true. That's true. That's true. So true. So true. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Maybe maybe we can move forward too, uh, because there are a lot of. Uh, People who wants to start right now. Uh, any advice for starters? Like uh, from, start from, from zero. Food. I mean, uh, maybe yes. we can start so with. The, say, yeah, maybe we can start with the food because yeah. that's the daily thing that uh, they should be tracking. Because not all people can adjust. Yeah. Right away to exercise. Yeah. See, the only thing that I will say why we say that it. Eighty percent food and twenty percent the diet because if the food is not on point, uh, your exercise will not give you the results. So start with the food. Try and reading about the whole food. Don't spend money right away in the supplements or any fad thing that is mm-hmm. available in the market because I have already already talked about it. Don't spend money on that. Spend money wisely on food. What kind of? And there is one rule that I would like. Say that how you will track the food is calorie in versus calorie out. What is the calorie you are taking, and you have to see how much spend expenditure you are doing in a day. You just have to create a deficit to start losing the weight, or to start, or, or you know, to start, oh, to start your fitness journey. 
so start reading out don't read everything that is available on google regarding the fat diet or anything any diet that you follow the key is calorie in versus calorie out you have to see how much you are taking in and then you have to see how much you are uh, you know investing in a day so the deficit that is that you are creating that is going to help you you know start with so start measuring your food start reading out don't spend on supplements right away and slowly and steadily That sounds great. Sounds great. I think that uh, that should inspire people to work out. I mean, it's, yeah. it's easy as one, two, three. I think I uh, calorie in, calorie out. Uh, that 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 what she just said right there. It's a very simple. Whatever it's you put in, you should put out. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, can you tell us more about reading? Uh, because you mentioned earlier that uh, the total weight doesn't really define what your body is composed of. So. Can you tell us more about reading your total weight uh, and then tracking your tracking macro. probably macronutrients and some yeah. because you, you were talking about um, choosing the right food so maybe let's talk like can you put up put up some advice on reading nutritional facts on fighting food or basically fresh foods uh, on on having a See, you know ha- happy diet. <laughs> <laughs> See, no food is bad. First of all, every food, yeah. all the food sources. that no food is bad or good it depends what you have to eat to achieve your goal so first of all i always read in the diet oh rice is bad rice is not not bad so it is the main source of carbs and with country yeah. people living in country like philippines and india where rice and wheat is the staple you cannot step away from your basic food source and start investing in some you know i will say uh, some very innovative name Food that has come in the market very extreme. <laughs> start to run towards the new name food. I will say I don't, don't have the word. So I will say the new name food be here. We start running towards it. But I will say that don't move away from your basic staple food like rice and beef. It is not bad. The only thing, as I mentioned, is calorie in and calorie out. You just have to see that. Another thing is our body is made of fat and muscle. So you have to. Target your way. Uh, target like this. What you want to gain? If you want to gain, you have to start working on the protein intake. And another thing, one more thing is how you will calculate the protein. So protein is calculate how much of protein you will take. It. So it's around one point two or one point eight into total body. So once you get that thing on your chart, the rest you can manage it with anything. You know the carbs or fat. I eat mm-hmm. like five to six slices of cheese every day. So. it's not that's why i said no food is good or bad depends what you want to achieve and first thing is to just calculate the macros of the protein and the rest you can actually uh, calculate with carbs and fat that you want to take so that's how we can start by tracking the macros and making a simple calorie deficit diet sounds good you should start a class uh, ma'am <laughs> we should call you ma'am <laughs> yeah, yeah. now <laughs> I we will, will, we will be gladly to attend. <laughs> yeah, oh, I mean, yeah. okay, why not? <laughs> I think people I'm should. Sorry. I think people should be listening to you in a class. Like, uh, I think that that explanation says it all. That you're really passionate about everything that you do in fitness. I mean, uh, and having a kid that it stop you. It yeah. even actually ignite you moving forward to this. And, With the husband, uh, with all support, that's really great. That sounds really great. I must say, congratulations to that. Yeah. Uh, so, before I move forward, uh, any fitness programs that you would recommend uh, uh, to the starters? Yeah. See, I means I just started because I, I love reading, but my husband took it actually to the next level. He got certified. But there is one fitness group that I used to follow. It's an Indian-based company, basically. It was started just by an IT professional, and they started a fitness group, and that's how we learned so much because that guy was so honest. He put it, he put out everything on the platform, and that also busted my myths that I used to carry. So I actually follow a fitter group. Uh, there is a group on Facebook that I follow. It's a fitter. It's an Indian startup company. Many people are there, and free knowledge is given to ask over there. People are so good, and they answer. Then I also follow many in Philippines, like 
I follow Gold's Gym because yeah. there are many workout uh-huh. videos that they have put out for the quarantine. I think people should check it out. It's really good, and they are also giving um, you know people's transformation journey. It can really inspire people like how common people like us. There are many mm-hmm. people what kind of things they had, so many hardships, how they started their journey. It's so inspiring. to look at their journey so gold stream philippines also have many any uh, home workout and the transformation journey so that you know you also get what get in start and get inspired and start your journey and there are many groups that comes um, on insta and facebook but these two groups i religiously follow i religiously follow and uh, i believe i have my trust on these groups That's good. Uh, wow. So, so, so to those starters or planning to start, so just check out some uh, Gold's Gym Facebook group. Is that Facebook or any platform will do? Uh, yeah. They should be Gold, inviting yeah, starters to join their community, right? Yeah. Yeah, it is Gold's Gym. Yeah, so, so you might want to... Mm-hmm. Sorry, sorry, go ahead. No, the one is the Gold's Gym and the other is the Twitter group. So they really have a lot of nutritional as mm-hmm. well as exercise, uh, workout uh, uh, advice, and you can query and ask them to start. Got it, got it. Well, yeah, uh, I think it's a wrap. Uh, and we learned a lot, by the way. I think it's information yes. overload for us. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think it it's good. great. It's great for our listeners. Uh, I mean, especially this time. Uh, Um, they're having a lot of challenges uh, staying at home, yet they don't have, you know, the equipments in the gym. But uh, I think you, you're a living inspiration to them, uh, moving or basically thriving their fitness goals without even having that much equipment. And having a kid by the side, like a two-year-old kid, that must be really mm-hmm. challenging. And uh, you, just, you just really, you know, <laughs> went for it, so. Uh, first of all, we, I would like to thank you for taking time uh, here in the bad experience. Is there yeah, anything you want to promote or anything you want to plug in? Uh, how about uh, uh, Bodycon, Boots Gym? Yeah, I think though the Bodycon has been postponed, but I think it will happen next year. I would really uh, like your viewers to you know, uh, like the page of Boots Gym and follow our journey over there. They keep posting about the contestants' journey and uh, their workout routine. So just guys, go and follow. And I will say, just live in the moment and don't stress yourself. Wow. That's really... Thank you. Thank you. Got no words for that. Uh, I would just... <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I think it's a wrap. Uh, thank you. Of course... Uh, the Bad Place are here. Thank you, Ms. Toshi. By the way, don't forget to like and subscribe Thank to the you. Bad Place Facebook page and YouTube channel. Don't forget that. See you next week for another episode of Bad Experience. Bye.